good afternoon children last time on 1st of september i had taken a class on this revised national tuberculosis control program we had spoken about the tuberculosis and the national program on the tuberculosis today we shall be discussing on the rest part of this revised national tuberculosis control program we'll talk about the different types of diagnostic algorithms the different types of treatment of category 1 and category 2 kind of tuberculosis cases and the achievements in the last class which was taken on 1st of september we had spoken about the national tuberculosis program which started in 1962 that time the tuberculosis was rampant and the number of medicines available for the tuberculosis in the country was very limited and the program was reviewed from time to time at the at the end of 1980s it was found that the program is not creating the suitable environment and the tb treatment rate was very poor and ultimately the cure rate was also very poor there was lot of relapse cases and the drug compliance rate was very poor so with that the rntcp was initiated by the international agencies like who and sida sida is the swedish international developmental agency and they thought that the dots program dots means the directly observed uh, treatment short, short term chemotherapy treatment for tuberculosis so they thought that the or they suggested that the dots program will be very good for the indian context with that the rntcp was initiated in 1993 and slowly it covered the whole country by 2006 we have already discussed all this we have discussed about the burden of tuberculosis in india the burden is approximately 20 lakhs of new cases or 19 lakh 60000 new cases every year with 80000 smear positive cases we spoke about the crux of the rntcp rntcp has got uh, three main elements that is sputum microscopy was given the uh, much more emphasis than the chest x ray earlier chest x ray was given the much, uh, maximum importance whereas in rntcp sputum microscopy uh, had been given the maximum importance the case diagnosis is mainly by passive way anyone who is suffering from cough for more than 14 days if there is a tinge of blood in the sputum or if there is high fever and chest pain these are the suspected cases and they are brought under the microscopical examination for the sputum the new sorts of chemotherapy with the help of the dots chemotherapy was reduced instead of every day treatment it was reduced to thrice a week so these are the kind of crux of the rntcp which we have already discussed in my earlier classes we discussed the dots in complete in a totality we have discussed about the organization of rntcp that is at the state level that is at the higher level in the central level at the level of ministry of health and family welfare also in the state level in the district level then the laboratory network in india we discussed about the national referral laboratory which uh, which which are six in numbers and located in different parts of the country and we also spoke about the irl that is the intermediate reference laboratory which are located mostly in the state capitals one per state and thereafter there are district microscopic center which is known as the designated microscopy center or dmcs we also spoke about certain new initiatives in the diagnostics and these initiatives are mainly that the passive case detection followed by microscopy and last but not the least indian government have made it a rule that the serological test for tuberculosis was banned uh, earlier in uh, the beginning of uh, 2000 to 2010 serological test of tuberculosis was rampant and uh, mostly available in the market in the name of tb gold test however it was found that this test is uh, gives you a lot of false positive reports 
It is positive in chronic malaria, in chronic infectious diseases, in rheumatoid arthritis and so many and so, so on and so forth. So TB gold test, only depending on the TB gold test, you can't start anti treatment for a patient. So that, that's why TB gold test was banned by government of India. So these are the new initiatives in diagnostic. With this discussion on the previous class, what we have already discussed and now we have revised, we will now forward further into the left out portion of the RNTCP. This is a, um, uh, this particular uh, uh, slide of the sequence was shown to you in the last, but I have still given it here, the dot strategy of RNTCP, this is very important. These had uh, initially main five, co five components and this is the political will and administrative commitment. So the support from the government was very high, so that there was no failure in the diagnosis and the uh, chemotherapy part of this program. Diagnosis by quality sputum microscopy, supply of the chemotherapy medicines, directly observed treatment, that is the patients are to be given the treatment under certain kind of observations. These observations are done by the DOT uh, agents and these agents can be the school teachers, can be the ASHAs, can be the voluntary uh, health guides or the Anganwadi workers and systematic monitoring and accountability. The, these five points were very important in the beginning when the DOTs were started somewhere in 1993 and thereafter further consolidated in 1999 and 2006. However, in 2006, top TB strategy was adopted and with that, the quality of the services was tried to be further improved. And so the quality of DOTs with expansion and enhancement was one of the criteria, followed by addressing TB HIV, which are comorbid conditions or comorbid infections and also the multi-drug resistance tuberculosis. Health system strengthening, engaging all healthcare providers in uh, kind of giving uh, cover for the tuberculosis uh, treatment, empowering patients and communities so that they can come up with their suggestions and they can also come up uh, in, uh, and help uh, in case detection and promoting research. Now, in this slide, we discuss about the initiation of diagnosis of tuberculosis in RNTCP. Here, the case finding is passive. I have already discussed this. Patients who are suspicious of tuberculosis are screened for two sputum uh, smears. The suspicious patients are brought under the cover of the RNTCP with the help of the village health guides or the ASHAs or uh, dot center providers or maybe uh, by the community health workers. So sputum examination done in the designated microscopic center which are located in the CHCs and PHCs and each center has a technician and a STLS. STLS is the senior, senior technical uh, laboratory supervisor. He is a supervisor or senior TB laboratory supervisor. He is a supervisor to ensure the quality of the test and he generally rechecks all positive cases and 10% of the negative cases. Two sputum samples are checked and these are essential. This one, one is a spot sample, another one is a morning sample. Sputum microscopy indicates that the confirmation of the diagnosis, if the sputum microscopy is positive and it shows mycobacterium tuberculosis, then we have to start the treatment. So this is a confirmation, confirmatory diagnostic test. Also, it shows the infectivity status. If the number of bacilli per field of the microscope is very high, then uh, it shows that the patient uh, needs segregation, hospitalization, or maybe some kind of segregation, isolation, so that he doesn't uh, kind of spread the infection in the community. This is a very important slide and this shows the algorithm of pulmonary tuberculosis diagnostics. Here you can see that there are uh, four marking points, one, two, three, four, which are marked in uh, kind of green. So first you take a case of presumptive TB patient or a suspected TB patient and if he is a PLHIV, he is to be directed for the CBNAT test. CBNAT test is the cartridge based nucleic acid amplification test. This is very important and this can diagnose the tuberculosis without any failure. So 
PLHIV suspected to be having tuberculosis are to be subjected to CBNAT test. Now thereafter we come in the for the presumptive tuberculosis, tuberculosis patients who are not HIV positive, they are subjected to two kind of tests that is the smear examination and chest x-ray. If it is a smear positive and uh, uh, chest x-ray positive then they are microbiologically positive and they are subjected to treatment. In the second condition that is the number two the smear positive but chest x-ray negative so still they are taken as microbiologically positive and they are subjected to treatment. In the third condition when they are both negative that is smear negative and CXR negative so they are subjected to CBNAT test. And the last condition that is smear negative but chest x-ray is suggestive of tuberculosis that is the clinically suspicious case they are also to be subjected to CBNAT test. So CBNAT test the patients who will be subjected to CBNAT test that is the PLHIVs people living with HIV and having tuberculosis or those who are smear negative and CXR suggestive of tuberculosis or those who are smear negative and CX, CXR not suggestive uh, CXR not suggestive of tuberculosis but clinically suspicious of tuberculosis. So these three cases will be three lots of patients will be subjected to CBNAT. Now we come to the CBNAT test. CBNAT I told you that, that it is <coughs> cartridge based nucleic acid amplification test here what we do we, we, there are two outcomes that is the mycobacterium tuberculosis detected and there is no MTV. If mycobacterium tuberculosis is detected then we they ca, it can there can be two or out, three outcomes one is that it is rifampicin sensitive, one is that it is rifampicin indeterminate and one is that it is rifampicin resistant. If it is rifampicin sensitive then it goes to the microbiologically positive tuberculosis case so the treatment has to be started. If it is rifampicin indeterminate that is R indeterminate then the repeat CBNAT test has to be done with the second sample. If even the second sample is also indeterminate then we have to do a kind of liquid culture or the line probe assay LPA fresh from the fresh uh, kind of uh, sputum sample. Then there is a third uh, uh, this thing that is that uh, rifampicin resistant in that case it is referred to the management of higher TB centers for the resistant tuberculosis or MDR tuberculosis. Now out of the CBNAT test if we find that there is no MTB that is mycobacterium tuberculosis then we have to consider for alternate diagnosis and refer to the specialist and ultimately it can be finally diagnosed to clinical tuberculosis or there may be some alternative diagnosis. So this particular algorithm is very important it may come in the examination diagnostic write the diagnostic algorithm for tuberculosis as per RNTCP so please remember it try to memorize it and so that you should be able to write in your examination papers. Now this slide shows the initiation of tuberculosis treatment. So all patients are provided with short course therapy. During the intensive phase medicines are administered under supervision of DOTS agents. DOTS I have already explained DOTS is this directly observed treatment short term therapy for tuberculosis. Supervised community based medicine administration, community level community based care and provides clue for detection of new cases and also ensures high cure rate. Dots given through the MPWs that is the multiple uh, sorry uh, medical social workers, voluntary workers and the school teachers. And dots uh, workers also get uh, generally uh, honorarium for each of the patient after the patient is completely cured. Certain new initiatives are there in the treatment also for tuberculosis. So daily regimen for pediatric cases have been prepared and there is a fixed dosage combination. It is often called FTC packet fixed dosage combination for six weight bands. If you diagnose a pediatric case generally maybe in the age of five years or so plus till up to ten years so there are six to seven weight bands and so there has been a fixed dose, uh, dosage combination and that has been made as per the weight bands. 
daily uh, regime for all forms of tuberculosis has been formulated, daily regime for the tuberculosis HIV co-infected cases have been formulated, universal access to diagnostics and the treatment services by all. This is a very important thing that all community members, all rural people, all marginalized group or society, they are able to reach or access the diagnostic, TB diagnostic services as well as the treatment services. Drugs are supplied patient wise boxes for full courses divided into daily and weekly blister packs. Drugs are initially divided into two packs, one is for the initiation that is phase and the second one, one is for the intensive phase and the second one is for the continuation phase and within the intensive phase there are daily drug packets whereas in the continuation phase there are weekly drug packets. So, for intensive phase each blister pack has one day drugs and for continuation phase each blister pack has weekly drugs and there are combi packs also supplied separately for the extension phase. This all will be uh, one by one kind of described and explained to you after um, uh, uh, further in my presentation. The boxes are colored, red color is for the category 1 patient. Category 1 patient you know these are the fresh patients, new patients. This can be pulmonary tuberculosis, this can be extra pulmonary tuberculosis, the, but they are freshly diagnosed. They have never been treated for tuberculosis. Whereas, CAT2 patients are the old patients, sometimes they have been treated for tuberculosis, there might have been some failure in the treatment, there might have been some non-compliance, so there may be some relapse, so those are called the category 2 patients. Here we are giving the standard dose of ATDs that is the anti tuberculous drugs under the RNTCP. You see we have isoniazid, rifampicin, these are the first line drugs, isoniazid, rifampicin, pyrazinamide, ethambutol and streptomycin. Isoniazid is available in the tablet form in 300 milligram and it is uh, thrice a week dose is 600 milligram thrice a week. Then uh, rifampicin 450 milligram tablets and it is also given thrice a week. Then pyrazinamide it is given two tablets thrice a week. It is 750 milligram tablets and it is given 1500 milligram thrice a week. And ethambutol is 600 milligram tablets. It is given two tablets thrice a week or 1200 milligram thrice a week. Streptomycin is 0 0.75 gram intramuscular injection thrice a week. We have those patients who are weighing less than 30 kg, they are to be uh, subjected to those FDCs, fixed dose combination as per the pediatric uh, weight band and patients who weigh more than 60 kg, they receive extra 150 milligram of rifampicin in intensive phase. This particular slide shows the ATDs given here as per the milligram per kg of the body weight. Uh, you can have a look in this slide in, uh, in detail and may try to remember them. Uh, this is helpful for those where the uh, weight is less than 30 uh, kg. So, this is specially helpful for the children. Now we are coming down to this treatment regimens. Treatment regimen under this RNTCP there are two types. One is the category 1 and second one is the category 2. Category 1 cases are generally colored, the box is colored. It will come in the later slides. The box is colored red. Category 1 patients are red patients. These are all new pulmonary tuberculosis and extra pulmonary tuberculosis cases. And category 2 is the TB patients who had some kind of antitubercular drugs previously. It can be relapse cases, failure cases, treatment after default cases, something like that. So, for category 1, the treatment is 2 H3R3, Z3E3 plus 4 H3R3, 6 months therapy. 2 indicates 2 months intensive phase, H3R3, Z3E3 indicates that thrice a week regimen. I hope you could perceive 2 that is the prefix is indicates that it is 2 months course and H3R3 Z3E3 where this 3 has been the prefix, the suffix. So, they are 
indicating that these medicines are to be taken thrice a week. And dose we know, H stands for INH, isoniazid, R stands for rifampicin, Z stands for pyrazinamide and E stands for etambutol. And then 4 months of continuation therapy that is 4H3R3 that is isoniazid is to be taken thrice a week for 4 months and similarly rifampicin also to be taken thrice a week for 4 months. So this is the category 1 patients and this is the simplest treatment for pulmonary or extra pulmonary tuberculosis which have been diagnosed in a fresh. Then we are coming to the category 2 patients, there the treatment schedule is 9 months. So 2 months intensive followed by 1 month semi intensive and 5 months continuation therapy. In the 2 months intensive therapy we give H3, R3, Z3, E3 and S3. So in that S3 that is it is uh, the streptomycin that is to be taken under a DOTS agent thrice a week for 2 months. Thereafter come one month another phase of intensive, phase 2 of intensive that is H3, R3, Z3, E3 and followed by 5 H3, R3, E3. So this is the treatment regimen, this you have, to, uh, you have to remember throughout your life because this is very important to treat any kind of tuberculosis case. The basis for the regimens are given here, how we have determined this kind of regimen in the RNTCP for category 1 new sputum mias positive uh, cases, high bacillary population will be there in the beginning. So chances for naturally occurring resistant mutants are higher. Therefore, four drugs <coughs> are given in the intensive phase. Whereas in category 2 because of the previous treatment chances of harboring resistant bacilli is very high and therefore five drugs are given in the intensive phase and a total duration of treatment of 8 months is given. In continuation phase, uh, uh, the, for the lower bacterial population and hence less chance of resistance organism, therefore three drugs are considered enough for the continuation phase. Now we are giving you how the DOTS packets are given, Do, this is the rate packet. This packet is for the new category or the category 1. Here all medicines are put into two kinds of packs that is one is intensive phase pack and another one is uh, continuation phase pack. In the intensive phase pack you will have 24 blister doses for two months. For one month you require three packets every week for four weeks so it will be 12, 12 packets for one month so for two months 24 blister packets are available. Here these packs are daily packs. Once you open that pack, you have to consume that full number of tablets, whatever is there in the pack in one day. So these are the daily packs, 24 blisters, daily packs for two months of intensive phase. And there is an eight, 18 weekly combi packs are available for four months of continuation phase. The first dose of the combination pack is to be given by, uh, to be taken by the patient under the DOTS agent or the do direct observation and thereafter the remaining medicines are to be taken home and the DOTS agent or this li like I told the DOTS agents are generally locally employed, they may be school teachers, they may be ashas, they may be an, uh, kind of uh, community health workers, they will come and in front of them you have to take it out and take the medicine. So this is the new category patient. So these are the new category patients that is the category 1 patients. Uh, the new category patient uh, uh, in this uh, treatment the patient is sent for follow up sputum examination after 22 blister pack is over in the intensive phase and 23rd and 24th blisters uh, are taken as per the schedule and thereafter if the follow up examination is negative after the 22nd uh, blister pack the patient is put onto the continuous phase after the 24th of 20, after the consumption of the 24th pack. After 2 months in the continuation phase uh, then uh, again at the end of the treatment of 17th weekly uh, strip uh, follow up sputum examination is again done. If the follow up sputum examination after the IP is positive and the IP extended for 1 month sputum examination is done again at the end of this phase. 
If the follow sputum examination is positive after the extended phase, the CP is started irrespective of the result. Now, DOTS delivery under uh, RNTCP, it is for the blue category cases or the category 2 cases or previously treated category cases. Here, medicines are put into again kind of intensive uh, phase and the uh, continuation phase. So, the, it contains 22 weekly combi packs for 5 months of CP and contains 36 blister packs for 3 months of IP and 24 injections for 2 months of IP. These numbers are little uh, kind of you have to calculate it properly. These 36 blisters packs are daily packs. For every month you require to take medicine for 12 days. So, for 3 months it is coming 36 blister packs. Whereas, 24 injections because the injection is given for 2 months not for complete uh, 3 months. So, therefore, it will be 12 plus 12 that is 24. The first dose of weekly combi pack should be swallowed by the patient under the direct observation. Remaining part of the combi pack is taken back home and uh, there it is taken on alternate days uh, in front of the designated uh, DOTS uh, supervisor and vitamin tablets are also taken in the remaining days. Then there are two points here that is the drug resistance tuberculosis under RNTCP. You have extensively resistant to uh, 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 drug resistant tuberculosis. The resistance to the two most powerful anti tuberculosis drugs uh, out of the first four uh, uh, this thing uh, first line drug treatment. So, they this has been this was described in 2006 and resistant to three or more <coughs> classes of the second line drugs and this these 5000 such cases have been reported worldwide. The drug resistance is generally caused by the incorrect prescriptions, erratic supply of the drugs, poor quality of the drugs and the patient's non-compliance. We now talk about the treatment of uh, MDR, XDR TB, extensively drug resistance and the multi drug resistance TB. First uh, block contains a multi drug resistance tuberculosis. Multi drug or MDR TB, it is uh, there are two types. One is the uh, resistant, uh, uh, rifampicin resistant, but INH sensitive, and the second one is both resistant. So, in the initial phase for the first category, it is given the levofloxacin, etionamide. Uh, thereafter, it comes uh, uh, that is your uh, cycloserine and then ZDH that is pyrazenamide, etambutol and isoniazid. These medicines are given for 6 to 9 months <coughs> followed by in the continuation phase it is given again the levofloxacin, etionamide, cycloserine, etambutol and isoniazid for 18 months. So, this, this combination is given for <coughs> rifampicin resistant but ionic sensitive. In case of both resistant, it is canamycin is added. So, it is given canamycin, levofloxacin, etionamide, cycloserine and then ZD, ZD is pyrazinamide and etambutol. This is given for 6 to 9 months followed by it is uh, kind of uh, uh, levofloxacin, etionamide and the cycloserine and etambutol. In case of XDR TB that is extensively drug resistance tuberculosis, here certain new drugs are added like CM that is capriomycin, PAS that is para amino salicylic acid and ETO, uh, ETO that is etionamide, then uh, moxifloxacin and followed by uh, clofazimine and INH in very high doses. There is also the uh, uh, linezolid and also the amoxicillin with uh, kind of uh, clavulonic acid. So, these are given for 6 to 12 months and then it is followed by another continuation phase of PAS, mozifloxacin, INH in high doses, clofazimine and linezolid, amoxicillin and clavulonic acid for 18 months. So, number of medicines 
for MDR and XDR TV, for treating MDR and XDR TV is very high, very high and it is very difficult for the patient to take so many medicines daily. So, it has been calculated that it uh, contains around 14,600 pills to treat uh, MDR TV and if you stack up the pills end to end then it, uh, it comes to around 228 meters which is the height of the Golden Gate Bridge in US. So, there is a need for further research on this and there is a need to uh, for better treatment of this MDR XDR tuberculosis. We now talk about the drug resistance surveillance under the RNTCP in India. Drug, drug resistance is taken as an indicator for the effectiveness of the control measures. The DRS seen among newly detected cases as well as in the previously detected cases. Drug resistant TB has been common in India and the DRS survey carried out as per the guidance and global guidelines. Prevalence of MDR TB is 2.5 percent among the newly detected cases and 16 percent in the retreated cases. It is quite a high percentage. If you consider that there are 20 lakh new cases detected every year in India, then 2.5 percent of 20 lakh will be MDR tuberculosis, uh, which is considered quite a high number. Management of drug resistant cases under RNTCP services for drug resistant cases started in 2007 in Gujarat and Maharashtra and thereafter extended to the other states and covered the, all the states by 2013. By 2015, MDR detected the number of MDR cases were 28,876 among the new cases and 47,000 among the retreated cases. MDR cases given standard treatment as per the RNTCP regime, what I have already discussed in my previous slides. Now, we talk about this TB HIV collaborative services under RNTCP. Tuberculosis is an infection which is very common, comorbid condition along with the uh, HIV uh, infection. Intensified TB case finding at all HIV testing centers, ICTCs and ART centers to be done, is generally done. HIV testing centers, ICTC that is this counseling and treatment centers, integrated counseling and treatment centers and ART centers that is the antiretroviral therapy centers. HIV testing of tuberculosis patient done by the provider initiated testing and counseling and PLHIVs get free ART from the ART centers and if also co-infected with the tuberculosis they get the medicines for tuberculosis as well. Expansion of HIV TB collaborative services through the facilities of HIV screening is also done at the designated microscopic center for the tuberculosis at the PHC and the CHC level. PITC that is the provider initiated testing and counseling initiates the counseling of the presumptive TB cases and undertakes the screening for HIV in high and low HIV endemic areas. Intensified case finding in HIV positive pregnant mothers is also being done and INH prophylaxis for PLHIVs are given to prevent the onset of tuberculosis in the HIV positive cases or in the PLHIV individuals. National strategic plan. The plan includes the strengthening and improving of the quality of basic DOTS services aligned with NH, NRHM that is the National Rural Health Mission Services, improve rapid diagnosis at the field level and engaging all healthcare providers including NGOs to provide the anti tuberculosis treatment, strengthening urban TB control, improving the diagnostics and the treatment of drug resistant tuberculosis, communication and outreach facilities, promote research and development and implementation of the NEMA techniques in TB controls in India. These are the national strategic plan. There is a vision. We have adopted a vision of TB free India, the vision for universal access to services under RNTCP. Government of India fostered a program of TB free India by 2034, framed a goal for access to quality diagnostics and treatment objectives are early detection and treatment of 90 percent of estimated all types of tuberculosis. 
successful treatment of 90% of new cases and 85% of previously treated cases, reduction in the default rate by less than 5% in new cases and less than 10% in retreated cases, screening for drug resistance for all retreated and smear positive cases and new cases with provision of MDR TB treatment. MDR TB treatment has been provided at the district headquarter levels. HIV counseling, TB HIV screening as a collaborative service and RNTCP services to the patients in the private sectors also. Government of India has framed certain current targets. Now this slide shows the current targets under RNTCP that is detection and treatment of 87 lakh of TB patient during 12th 5 year plan. This was the target. This 12th 5 year plan was in 2012 to 2017. Approximately similar number of patients were detected and are being, were being treated. Detection and treatment of 2 lakh MDR cases. Reduction in delay in diagnosis and treatment of all types of tuberculosis cases and increase in access to the services by the marginalized, poor and the remotely located patients. We talk about the achievements under RNTCP under the present context. RNTCP has extended services to all over India since 2006. Treatment success rate has increased from 25% in 1998 to 88% in 2015. You can see a very good change from 25 to 88%. Death rate due to tuberculosis has reduced from 29% to 4%. 731 designated district tuberculosis centers, 4,888 tuberculosis units and 13,886 designated microscopic center are functional at present. Involves many NGOs, private practitioners, private hospitals and medical colleges. More than 6 lakh public health care staff trained for the services of the DOTS therapy. TB HIV services started in 12 states and being extended to others. 16 million patients treated and 2.8 million lives have been saved so far and 121 centers opened for expert or NAT services. Expert and NAT services is specially uh, oriented for this nucleic acid ampl amplification test. Program supported by the World Bank, USAID and other international agencies. These have been the achievements for tuberculosis. Finally to conclude the RNTCP has been promising since inception. It attracted political, administrative and international support in India. It expanded considerably since 2006 and now provides cover to almost all parts of India. It further aims to provide the services to the marginalized part of the society. It aims on further extension deep into the marginalized communities expected to bring desired result of TB free India by 2034. To end it, the TB is curable. We need every patient to count. We have to find them, treat them and cure them. Thank you very much.